Welcome to 3Mac. Do you want to learn about computational design, advanced manufacturing, materials modeling, or integrity assessment? Then this is the channel for you. I regularly upload new content, so please hit the subscribe button below for regular updates. Hi guys, welcome to this video. And in today's video, I have got some questions related to meshing tips. What is hourglassing, zero energy modes, or uh, parasitic shear strains? What is or how to eliminate shear locking or volumetric locking and again the users normally say don't show us equation there are many videos with equations and everything we just want to see get some practical tips so i will try to keep it as practical as possible it is somehow difficult to explain this just practically so but still i will just explain as, as, as at a very high level and if you need any more explanation or if you're interested in more details then comment below and i will try to prepare some theoretical stuff or more stuff as well so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to have a cantilever beam simulation a cantilever beam has a length of 10 millimeter in this case a cross section is a square cross section with b and h equals to one millimeter and i'm assuming the properties to be steel the analytical solution doesn't account for Poisson's ratio as you can see here so i have computed the analytical solution which is 0.2 I will, in this in the abacus file i will define both and i will show you how you can reach to that analytical solution by varying different types of uh, by using different types of elements and reduce integration elements show the hourglassing zero energy modes full integration elements may show shear locking under pure bending cases and incompressible material properties for example if you have a rubber type material which has a Poisson's ratio of 0.495 or 0.5 or something and it can show volumetric locking so how to eliminate those uh, in a general way in an abacus perspective so if you want to download the model file again you can go to this website and you can download all the models from this website okay, so let's jump into abacus and see how we can simulate the case which we i just showed you before and try to replicate the zero energy modes or hourglassing and then try to remove it somehow using meshing or element type and also look into shear locking if we can reach to that kind of thing which is a problem of full integration elements and how we can remove that and later on i will also try to show you in today's video about volumetric locking and how you can get rid of that as well again i will not try to be more practical as people have said no mathematics and no equations and i will just mention what what is really happening so what i have done as i showed you in the example i have created a rectangle which is a 2d part and it has a dimensions of 10 millimeters by 1 millimeters then i go to the material properties and in this case i have assigned two materials in this case uh, for the first one i've used steel properties as you see here and it's all linear elastic isotropic material while the second one is it is very much the same so so we can use any one of them basically okay all right so what i have done is i have created two sections again but you can use any one in this case which I, section one is related to material one you can specify a plane strain or plane stress thickness let's use a thickness of one because it's given us given to us in the problem Similarly, for the second case also, we can use a thickness of one. Default is one, I think, as well. So you can leave it to that as well. And then what I've done is I have assigned the properties to this thing. So you can see I have assigned it to both the cases. So I will delete one of them maybe. So maybe we keep it for material two, which is also steel. So both are the same, basically. So now material properties are there. If you don't know how to define the or assign the material properties again, there are a lot of videos on my YouTube channel, so please have a look at that or comment below and I will try to explain to you how you can do it in detail. Then we go to the assembly and we instance the part. We only have one part, so we just click, click on this button, click on this and press OK and you will have this part here. And now we go to the next module, which is step. And in this case, we are going to use a static general step with a total time of one. And if you can see, I have turned the nonlinear geometry on, although the deformation is not that high, but still just to improve the convergence. And I'm using a light number of increments so that it doesn't stop if it reaches to a maximum number of increments, which is generally 100. And I'm asking it to go start with an 0.1 increment and maximum is also 0.1 and it will go up to a total time of one. So this means we will have 10 increments 
uh, in the simulation and we will we will get similar for the output as well for the output again what i have done is i have asked for the default i haven't changed anything and i'm asking it to write for each increment this means it will, it will at least write 10 increments as an output for us so that's what's on this side and then we go to the interactions we don't need any interactions here because it's all one part only and then we go to the loads we are going to fix the left hand side of the beam which is kind of a cantilever beam so we'll use in caster or we can fix all the degrees of freedom as we have done here as i have done here while on the right hand side i have a force as you remember it was 10 newtons or something so i have applied a force of 10 newtons in two direction why is the two direction and it's in the negative direction because positive in the is in the upward direction as you see here and it's a ramp so this means it will be increased linearly from zero to total time of one second okay so that was about loading now comes the meshing obviously as a default if you you have to go to the part and you have to do it individually in this case i first create a global seed and i'm giving giving it a seed of one so this means i will have one element in this direction and i will have 10 elements in this because it's a 10 millimeter length along this dimension and then i say okay can you please mesh it for me and you see i have 10 elements and one element along the thickness section which is not appropriate but just to demonstrate the zero energy modes I'm trying to show you here and if you look at the element types so you see here I have as a default it has chosen standard linear reduced integration elements everything else is default I haven't changed anything our glassing it's also using as default and it is using plain strain elements so if it's a thick structure you can go with a plain strain element where the deformation in the thickness direction is almost zero or negligible and if it's a thin alley structure then you go with the plane stress element so again it's your call whatever you want to do let's go with plane it's a one by one thing so i think we can go with plane strain as well but anyways it's your call in this case it's a simple problem so now we have a reduced integration and let's see how it behaves if you remember the analytical solution was giving us a solution of around 0.2 millimeters so we should get something similar if our, our mesh is optimized if everything is done correctly so I go to the job module now and I create a new job let's say and I say reduced and I say 1 by 10 I don't know if it will allow me to write x it should allow me to write x I think so 1 by 10 is the mesh size and I press continue and it asks me for this so I will just go with the default again you can play around with all these memories and everything where it's a small job so you don't need to do that you can assign the memory pre-memory post memory how much processor should you you will allocate to this job also if you're doing explicit then it's very important because the time increment co can go very small depending on the properties so you can use full precision and double precision as well so but in this case i think it's not going to matter and then i submit it's going to be a quick run because it's an elastic problem so i hope it will finish in time it should go with 0.1 and 0.2 and so on unless there is a convergence issues so it has gone through everything fine and you see it says gone 0.1 0.2 and our last one is this because i think somewhere in the middle it had some problems and we will see what those problems are because of the reduced integration so we are now pressing the results and now we are in the visualization mode which is a post-processing mode of abacus cae and we press the control plots and what you see is it's a huge amount of deformation and we are not expecting that if you look at the displacement if you remember we are looking for around 0.2 in the vertical direction and what you see here which is again very small so you go to viewports viewports and rotate option just click on any one of the tabs select all of these I'm just doing it in a quick way uh, maybe 24 i don't know if it's enough if it's visible maybe 36 just to make it more so now you see our displacement are very unrealistic it's around 10 9 or 10 millimeters vertical displacement which is not correct right so what we can do now is there are few ways of doing it so if we go back to the mesh and definitely we know the analytical solution so it's not correct we go to the element type here and we say please use some kind of enhanced hourglass 
control. So this is a kind of an abacus uh, numerical formulation. Again, you can look into the documentation and see how it goes. So let's see if it improves it or not. I know the thing, but I mean, let's see. So let's submit again the same thing. And remember, we haven't optimized the mesh yet. It's just a very coarse mesh. So it's running. And it's finished. So now we go to the results again. Hopefully it's able to open that. And we press. And you see what now it seems reasonable, the deformation. But let's see if how close it is. And you see it is around 0 0.1718, which is, which is not that far from 0 0.2. So again, now it could be because of numerical errors as well. So you can optimize the mesh based on that. So you see one way of removing or improving the results from reduced integration elements, especially when you have bending type loading and you have these kind of parasitic shear strains, which are causing these different, these kind of unrealistic modes in your reduced integration elements then you can use enhanced or other types of hourglassing options which are op which are available in abacus mesh module so you remember you go here select the part and then you can play around with the hourglass control and you can even specify your own data as well if you really are an expert user other way around is basically you can go with a full integration rather than the reduced integration so let's see what happens then okay so if we go now to full integration again we haven't optimized the mesh we just changed from reduce to full integration let me check if it has enhanced or not so it doesn't require any hourglass because this problem hourglassing problem or zero energy modes or parasitic shear strain come when you have a reduced integration and again you go back to the formulation and see how it happens so for for full integration you don't really require that so let's go now and see what happens so full integration nothing changed and now it's running so it should not take long as well in my opinion and it's finished so now we go to the results again and we plot and again you see the formation looks reasonable but let's see the values now and you see it's around 0.26 so it is slightly higher than expected so again that could be because you need a kind of uh, mesh refinement so now so now you understand if you have this parasitic strain and if you're using reduced integration element and if you have bending type loading or shear type loading you have to be careful and also you can use hourglass stiffnesses and other things to control that now let's go back to the mesh, go back to the same reduce integration thing, right? And our glass again, I'm not in using any of the formulation for our glass. Keep it like this, which was giving us a problem. And I just changed it. And now I try, try to refine the mesh. Okay, and see what, what it does. So maybe now we use at least four elements in thickness direction. So, so let's give it a size of 0.25 or something. Okay, and then we'll remesh it. So now we have this kind of thing, and now we go back and run it again. So first way was to either use full integration elements or use our glass stiffness, right? So I've showed you two ways. Now let's see. The third option is basically to refine the mesh. And again, you see, we didn't change anything and we have still reasonable displacement, although stress distribution doesn't look like this. And then you can see the values are much closer to what we expect. So we need further refinement here. So it's around 0.19 and we are expecting 0.2 as a maximum displacement here. So, so this is the third option, hourglassing, go to full integration, or go with this kind of uh, mesh refinement, which can increase the computational cost for you. Okay, another way of doing it is basically use, say for example, if I go back again here and change the element type to quadratic element, and that will also save me some time, save me from all these issues. So if I submit now with the same one, let's see what happens for this, with the same one, and then I will course on it. 
and show you how it looks. It may take slightly longer, but still not that long as compared to with jobs. And now if I go to results, so again, you see distribution looks pretty reasonable. And if you look at the displacements, again, we are at 0 0.18, 0 0.19. So, so you can see quadratic elements are also giving us reasonable results. If I go back to the mesh and if I say now that I want to change the seed to back to one, okay delete the mesh remesh everything so now i have that and then i'm double checking if i am using the quadratic element and it's with the reduce integration okay you can also remove that and that will be fine as well so let's go with with the reduce integration for the time being. so i'm still trying to keep it less theoretical and just giving you some practical tips but if you're interested in theory let me know i can prepare another video for that so again i've submitted that it's gonna run now completed results so if i go there and you see it's pretty reasonable the distribution and the scale of deformation if i look at the values so they are still very much the same so you remember i had four by four by i don't know if i want to use a size of 0.25 as an element size during seeding it was also giving me similar results so you see the the results from this is very much convergent again convert again it, you will not get 0.2 exactly because in the real formulation or analytical solution you had used uh poisson's ratio of 0.0 while in this case we are using a poisson's ratio of 0.3 so if you remember let's see which one is this section 2 material 2 so if i change the material 2 properties and see if it works 0.0 which is which was basically the case for the real uh, for the analytical solution so it should be giving me similar kind of behavior so again it is very critical that's why we say that you need to really understand the background theory in some cases while in some other cases as you keep on doing a lot of jobs and doing a lot of match sensitivity and element type sensitivity analysis and you know from experiments as well experience as well and sometimes you use your instincts as well so it's very important to consider all these aspects so again you see it's pretty reasonable and and you see now it goes to 0.2 which was the actual case for from the analytical solution so the difference was basically coming from that thing so i showed you different ways of removing these parasitic strain or zero energy modes or hourglassing effect so one is to use full integration second one is mesh refinement the so third one is hourglassing enhanced hourglassing in, in, in abacus and fourth one is quadratic elements so you can use those as well to improve your convergence and even you can see in this case you only need very limited number of elements but then you have extra nodes and extra integration points to solve in as a solver so i hope this makes sense so next thing is now to look at for example uh, if, I, if i look at that so now we're going to look at shear locking which again comes into play if you are using a full integration element in the banding loading and how to remove those. So I already had a discussion on that, that you can basically again use quadratic elements or maybe use a reduce integration element with our glassing and that can go away. Shear locking generally comes when you have kind of a pure banding case. So, 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 it's, so as a whole, it's very important that if you're using fully integrated linear elements, to remove this hourglassing effect then you have to make sure that you have minimal of the bending and if it's too much bending then you might need much refinement mesh refinements or maybe you need to use quadratic elements to remove this shear locking the quadratic elements are the best solution in my opinion if you have shear locking finally also if you if you come across shear locking and you want to really remove that then abacus also has uh, kind of formulation for elements so if you go to again to this section then you can see and if i say linear elements with full integration for example then you have incompatible mode because this kind of 
uh, shear locking is due to the fact that uh, it's your full integration element becomes unable to capture the bending and additional degrees of freedom caused by this so in order to avoid that they have a different formulation which is in, based on the incompatible modes so if you click on this for full integration element you can get rid of shear locking as well so again if you if you want to do it you can look at it in from in abacus documentation about this formulation so this is another option you can do third type of thing is basically if you have an incompressible material for example if you if you go here and if i say that okay my material has a or oh, has a oh, Poisson's ratio of 0.99 or 0.5 which is incompressible rubber type material so then then what will happen is basically your, your your material can your elements can lock volumetrically for incompressible cases and in such cases again you you have to be careful what you can do so if you if you come across this kind of problem then again you go to the meshing for example and you can use hybrid formulation because then you will use not only the displacement as a primary field but you can also use stresses or pressures or anything else as a primary secondary field as well so it's called hybrid formulation again you can look into the documentation that can help you sort that one of the problem out using an abacus and the best way to remove the volumetric locking according to the documentation is if you can refine the mesh if you can refine the mesh that will solve a lot of your problems from the volumetric locking perspective according to the documentation so these are few of the things i wanted to discuss and i hope these were the ones which you were asking about so if you have any further question or if you require any further clarification then get back to me and i will definitely try to answer those again i hope i had made it more practical it is very important many people just don't do it but mesh sensitivity analysis is an important business you can't use the FE soft solvers as a black box. Sometimes you can have catastrophic outcomes because of that. So good luck with that. And if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to help you out. Bye for now.